This is Tom Lane, DM2 Software's Vice President of Marketing. I would like to welcome everyone to today's StoreLink webinar. Before I introduce today's presenter, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Because of the number of attendees we have on today's webinar, everyone's phones will stay on mute. If you have any questions during the webinar, please enter them into the question window you see on the lower right of your screen. We'll try to answer everyone's questions at the end of the webinar. If we're unable to get to everyone's questions, we'll follow up with everyone individually after the webinar. Today's webinar is being recorded. As soon as the recording is available, we'll post it on the customer content page of our website and send you an email to let you know when it's available to be downloaded. On that note, I would like to introduce Lisa Teeley, professional service consultant and resident expert on our StoreLink product, to give you an overview of StoreLink. Take it away, Lisa. Okay, hi everybody. Um, if you have problems hearing, please uh, uh, do a, a chat to Tom. I live out in the country and sometimes my phone does not work the way I want it to work. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about StoreLink and how it can help you with our manual processes. I can get my page to go down. There we go. Um, and how it can help with the manual processes that you may be using to gather a store's daily information and bring it into your accounting system. So here's our agenda. What could be happening with your manual processes that could cause issues with the report itself or the financial information it is gathering? Can you easily analyze what's happening in your stores? There are ways that StoreLink can help you with more accurately reporting and analyzation. So we will talk about the things that can cause problems, how StoreLink can help, and what kind of reporting StoreLink can give you. Does this sound familiar? At the store, your reports aren't done in a timely fashion. The reasons for a report not being done timely are many. The manager may be shorthanded or is normally the only one on duty early in the morning. They might have poor management, time management skills, for example, saving everything to do when they actually do the report, like maybe retailing the invoices until they do the report. Invoices could be retailed as soon as they are received. Or the manager may simply not understand the reasons that the report should be completed and turned into the office on a timely basis. Because of all of this, information is slow to get to the office. The reports probably can't be mailed because of the amount of material that comes with the report. Forms, invoices, backup paperwork, etc. The store may not have the ability to fax or scan. So the reports may stay at the store for several days before someone comes by and picks them up and they may only be picked up once or twice a week. And then they have to be audited, adding more time to the process. Are the reports accurate? Is there human error or possibly even theft? How, how can you tell? All calculations are manually done. The report totals, the invoice retail extensions, etc. So with a manager that may be in a hurry to get things done, there could be calculation errors. And also, with a manager who understands how to play the game, invoices could be incorrectly retailed to hide inventory problems. At the home office, what could be wrong there? It's difficult to integrate a manual report into your main accounting package. It either needs to be keyed in or somehow transferred from the store accounting package to your main accounting system. A manual report requires extensive auditing for accuracy. I know, because I used to do it. All data entered on the report must be verified and recalculated. Did the manager use the correct data from the point of sale? Are the retail extensions on the invoices correct? You want accurate information going to the accounting system. You have to do this kind of auditing. Do you have a way to analyze your, your trends in merchandise sales, purchasing trends, fuel sales, cash over short, inventory over short? 
with a totally manually handwritten report, you have no way to collect information in order to analyze trends, at least not easily. What am I buying and what am I selling? Are the managers bringing in uh, unauthorized product? Are they buying what you have authorized them to buy? Or are they working on getting that free stuff the vendor is offering when you buy X amount of product? One of the first tasks I had when I went to work for a distributor was to go through the Coke invoices to see what was being bought. The operations manager was allowing more product to be bought so they could get some of the free stuff that Coke distributor was getting, giving away. Are the vendors charging me correctly? You don't know. You can't know unless you spend hours comparing the costs on the invoices to the costs on the vendor's price sheet. Are the invoice retails correct? Oops, sorry. If you are keeping track of your inventory at retail, in addition to cost, and you really should, your manager has to calculate the retail extension on the invoices as they come in. Do you have user error? Or is the manager padding their inventory to cover up any overshort? Is the manager using your price to extend the retails? Or are they using the vendor's recommended selling price? Or even worse, in some cases, is the manager determining what to sell the product for? Do you have control over the prices in your stores? And to me, a bigger problem, are the clerks ringing up the correct prices in the correct register department. You are relying on a minimum wage person to know what the price should be, to ring it up correctly, and in the right department. If they don't, there are major implications for your inventory and your gross margins. They might not remember that the Pepsi products are no longer on sale and are selling the product for something less than they should, and ringing it up on the beer key. This is where scanning will help you. Are the markdowns and markups being handled correctly? Do you do markups and markdowns? I know of companies that do not. How can you accurately account for your inventory if you don't? Without a price book and scanning, accurately handling markups and markdowns can be time consuming and prone to errors. With scanning, everything is handled correctly and automatically. How's my lottery doing? Do you have an accurate accounting of activated and unactivated books? Are you sure that all the tickets that leave the store have been sold and just didn't grow legs? How can you tell? StoreLink can help. I'm not going to say that it's the end-all, be-all, but it can definitely help. The back office PC will be interfaced to the point of sale. That means the PC is connected to the POS with a serial or network cable so that the two machines can communicate. About 80% of the data is automatically entered into the report. With the POS interface installed and the back office PC connected to your point of sale, that data required for the daily report is automatically entered when the store manager opens the report for the day. The interface pulls the information into the report, so the report can be completed much faster. I know some of our clients with very large C stores that can complete their report in about 15 minutes. What takes longest is counting the money. Now, not everything is entered. Deposits, money orders, bank drafts, lottery, and AP invoices need to be manually entered. And with scanning, even the AP invoices would also be downloaded into the report without the manager having to calculate those retail extensions. Here's some sample screenshots of some of the data entry. This first one is the register screen. All of the numbers on this screen can be pulled from the register. Grand total, sales tax, manufacturing coupons, store coupons, number of no sales, number of voids. If your register tracks it, we can bring it in. Using the grand total from the POS allows you to make sure that everything on the uh, day report was entered and entered correctly. 
down at the bottom of the screen, you can see that it says that register number one is balanced. It doesn't mean that the cash over short is okay. It means that the report was expecting X dollars in sales based on those grand total readings, and we entered those X dollars. So we don't have sales not being reported. This register department information screen is also filled by the POS interface. It is what the department sales section of your POS end of day report is listing. Field screen, here's where we enter in the um, uh, gallon and dollar meters as well as your sticking or tank monitor readings. The meter readings are automatically pulled over from the POS. If you're not scanning, this is the invoice entry screen. And if you're not scanning, if the system is going to keep track of your merchandise inventory, you have to enter the cost and retail value of your purchases. On the invoice entry screen, you can break out the purchases based on product groups. You can even force the manager to make sure that their gross margins are within the appropriate range that you set. This is the summary screen of our purchases. It gives you a summary of the invoices you have entered. If you're scanning, when the invoices are brought into the report, they will also appear here. However, they must be reviewed and modified if necessary before they come into the report. At this point, this is what it's going to be. Storelink can also help with some business rules. This is criteria that the daily report must meet before it's closed or can be closed. With those appropriate setups, the daily report can verify that all your sales have been entered, fuel stickings or tank monitor readings are within tolerance, cash over shorts and fuel over shorts are reasonable. You can set warnings or you can set a hard stop. For example, you could set up a warning saying that if the report is between, is either $10 short or $10 over, it's a warning. But if it's $20 over or $20 short, they cannot close the report until they report this business rule violation to the office. Somebody says, okay, have you checked this? Have you checked that? Okay, if, if you've checked everything, then we'll let you go, and they give them a password, a code, a key that will allow them to close the report and continue on. And these rules can also be, then be reported on a report at the home office so that management can see them. So at the end of the day, human error is greatly reduced. The system does all those calculations reducing it to human error to a great degree. Okay, our reports are automatically sent to the home office. If the report has not broken any business rules, the manager will close the report and it will automatically go to the office. The home office communication server will pick up the transmitted reports pull the data into the SQL database, and bring the data over to MASS, where data entry batches will later be created for the required entries into general ledger, AP, inventory, and accounts receivable. Your auditors will bring the data over to MASS for that review and update. They're going to review the store report and accept the data into one of those four areas. The big one is the GL transaction journal batch. Deposits, credit cards, merchandise sales, fuel sales and their taxes, cash over short, and merchandise inventory cost of goods entries will all be made to GL on a daily basis. The auditor will review it, make sure that certain uh, criteria are met for to update, and then they'll update, and it's in general ledger. The AP invoices will be brought into an AP invoice batch to be reviewed and updated into accounts payable. 
any customer in-house charges done at the store will be brought into an AR invoice batch as opposed to a sales order invoice batch and after review are updated into accounts receivable. Fuel gallons will be brought into an inventory issue transaction batch for review. When updated, the gallons will flow through to inventory where the batch's daily transaction register will record the fuel cost of goods to general ledger. Depending on how you have your workflow, the auditor can do all of those for all stores, or you could have a set of auditors that does this range of stores and this other set of auditors does those ranges of stores. Or you can have one person who is solely responsible for checking GL and updating it. Someone else is responsible for accounts payable, someone else for inventory, someone else for accounts receivable. Whatever works for you, we can probably accommodate it. Now, with Pricebook, purchases and sales are correctly recorded. The store will only receive authorized products. Depending on your internal controls and processes, the manager could only accept those products you have authorized. If they can't scan, scan the item when the vendor brings it in, it isn't in the price book, and it probably hasn't been authorized. Costs are verified when the product is received. The vendor has been sending you costs, and you have entered them into the price book, so you can verify that you are being correctly charged when that invoice and product is scanned in. The manager does not have to extend the retails. The products are brought in with the correct retail and the extensions are correctly calculated. So the manager doesn't have to do that part. And they will be added to the correct inventory department. With all cost and retail calculations being done by the system, your inventory totals will be more accurate then the retail price is sent to the point of sale, ensuring that the items are rung up correctly. Along with that price, we have told the, the POS what department that item belongs to. So there won't be any more cross rings if the clerk scans the items. You probably want processes in place so that store personnel know what to do when an item does not scan. The entry of invoices can be delayed a bit while your price book manager researches why an item didn't scan. But for sales, while you can make a POS require scanning and no manual entry, you will probably want to allow the clerk to make the sale. But they will need to collect the information about the item so that the problem can be reported to your price book manager. Lottery. Again, from personal experience, lottery can be the biggest pain in the world to try to keep track of. Unless you have a lottery machine dispensing your tickets, I mean like a, a, a Coke machine type machine dispensing your tickets, you know how hard it is to keep track of your ticket inventory, record the sales correctly, and prevent theft. StoreLink can track unopened packs and will tell you how many tickets you have sold based on the open packs, based on the ending ticket reading numbers you put in for each pack. This calculated sales number is what is considered the sale, not what is rung on the register. This means that if some tickets are not rung up for whatever reason, or if some tickets sneak out the front door, you will still record it as a sale. And if you didn't collect the money for those tickets, your cash over short will reflect it. With scanning installed, you can monitor what leaves the store much more closely. You can, lottery scratch tickets can be set up to be scanned. The scanned tickets will appear in the item tracker, which will tell you exactly how many tickets of each game were scanned. If you compare those numbers to what the daily report says was sold based on that last ticket number, it could help you determine if you have a problem with theft or just carelessness. 
Now we're going to talk about reporting. The store audit and summary reports are available at the store and at the home office. I'm going to go here and show you some samples. From within Mass itself, in the store link module, we have a whole menu full of reports, and I'm going to show you just a few of them. Under the daily reports, as well as under the management audit report option, you can see the daily reports. This is what the store sees at the store. This is their audit report that they should be reviewing before they close the report. You at the home office, by determining, you can pick which district you want to look at, what store you want to look at, what date you want to look at. The store report has the fuel information, the pumps, the sales dollars, the, sale, the gallons. We have our gasoline inventory. We can see what our opening gallons were, closing gallons, stick gallons, our over short for the day, and our over short, in this case, for the last five days. You can see fuel deliveries. You can see your merchandise receiving. You can see the invoices that have been brought in and the purchase groups, the product codes, that are on that invoice. For example, we have one from Amerigas. Then we have one Cormark invoice here and then a Coca-Cola invoice at the bottom. What product codes were used, what our cost was, our retail, and what the gross margin is for that product group. You can see whether it was paid for by a bank draft, a money order, or a charge. If we buy product by cash paid out, well, that shows up here. If your store is, takes in invoices from the man who cleans your parking lot or mows the grass or the bug man, they can enter those invoices, saving your AT department a step. They can enter those here at the office, and they'll flow up along with the, the uh, merchandise purchases to AP. If you've got a cash out for an expense, just like you would maybe for a cash paid out for merchandise, it shows. If you are scanning and the system determines that this particular sale requires a markdown. You brought in that package of cigarettes for $50, that carton of cigarettes for $50, and you sold it for $45. You need to do a markdown of $5. The system will calculate it, and it will bring it into the report, and it will adjust the inventory appropriately. You write off uh, products because you pulled Clorox off the shelf or some paper towel or somebody dropped a jar of peanut butter or milk, they'll show up here. Transfers in and out will show up. Money orders. If your point of sale report things like total merchandise sales, total gasoline sales, and customer counts, you can bring that in and you can get an average sales dollar. It lists the charge account, the in-house charges that occurred at the store, the credit card totals for the store. There's even a section on the store report that will tell, that can be configured however you want. Who prepared the report? Who took the report? Who took the deposit to the bank? What was the weather like? Were there any accidents? Or as you can see here, what were our card lot gallons? Then we have the lottery, book inventory, we can see what open books we have, what unopened books we have, our inventory total for this particular day. And then down, oops, too far, then down here 
is where we can see what tickets we sold that day. Our big bucks game started with, opened with a ticket number of 000. The last ticket sold was ticket number 19. So we sold 20 tickets. It was a $2 ticket. So we've got $40 in sale. We have a recap section here so that we can track and make sure that we are not over or under um, the register. You've got non-merchandise inventory. You sell hunting licenses, propane canisters, phone cards. Uh, maybe you've got a fax machine. Uh, this is, shows up here in this section. That initial screenshot that I showed you of the, of the uh, register readings, this is where you can see that entry on this screen. You can see the deposits your department sales for the um, register. And then we see our inventories at retail and at cost. After this section, there are a, a few areas that um, allow you to sort of proof the entries that were made to see how the system came up with some of the numbers. But the one that the manager probably comes to look at first is to see what their cash over short is. Also from this screen, we can look at a summary type report, which might be useful for management. It's a very high level view, total sales, money order sales, fuel tank uh, prices, sales, retail and cost for your purchases, et cetera. We can look at invoice reports. So without having to go in and look at the whole um, audit report, we can come in and look at the detailed invoice listing, and we can see those, re those invoices that were brought in, our cash invoices, our bank draft invoice, and our charge invoice, our cash, ex our cash expense, or our charge expense. And then we can also see what departments that they hit. Exception reports. This is where if you've had some people violate those business rules, you can come in and see which rules they violated. There's an item count report that I can't show you because this particular report did not have a physical count entry. But if it did, you could come in and see what the, what the results of the count were. Lottery book inventory. Here's where we get um, a very good overview of what books we have open, how many tickets we have remaining to sell, and what our unopened book inventory was. And if we had um, a price book, there would be some information on this store-defined price book. Let's see here. There are also management and operation reports that are available at the store and at the home office. Again, what you see at the store is for that store. What you see at the home office is for uh, all the stores, all your districts. They can be run for a day a week, a rolling seven days, a rolling four week periods. We can run flash reports which give you detailed information for specific areas of store link. We can run summary report which summarizes information for various different areas of store link and you can pick and choose what you want on that report. The same thing with exception reporting. You can define what kind of things you want to see as exceptions, and you can only see that. So we're going to go in and we'll take a look at some of those as well. This is what we call Operation Management Information System, OMIS. So, 
we can look at bank deposits, bank drafts, cash over short, fuel gallons sold, inside dollar sales, lottery dollar sales, deli dollar sales, money order dollar sales, average merchandise sales, average fuel sales, number of no sales. Unfortunately, this being demo data, I don't have dollar amounts in here, but you can kind of see what it's going to give you. If it's a day, and we picked February 13th, it's going to look at um, yesterday's report and report what yesterday was, compare it to last Wednesday, and tell us what the dollar difference and dot difference percentage was for bank deposits. If we look at it on a seven day, this date here, th this report here shows us what the deposits were for the last seven days and gives you a total and an average. The week is going to give you the report based on Wednesday's date all the way back to February 7th. And this week, from starting from February 6th all the way back to, what, January 31st, and show you a total for the week comparing that seven-day period starting on February 13th and this seven-day period starting the February 26th going backwards, giving you a dollar difference and a percentage difference. Same thing for the four-week. This is a four-week period starting going backwards from February 13th, comparing it to the previous four weeks from that, starting with January 16th, showing you the differences in dollars and differences in percentages. That is the flash report. Now we can also do what oh okay, let's do this. All right. We have an exception report. Again, I sorry, we don't have any current data, but what shows up here district store, what the exception is, uh, what type of exception it is, and the dollar amount, and if you had any ranges for that dollar amount, what are the ranges? You could do that. You do this by setting it up here. So this report, if we could get data for it, is going to show us an out-of-balance condition, that register out-of-balance with a minimum and maximum of $25. The number of no voids, it shows dollars, but it means 10. Number of no sales means 100. And where gas refunds or overrings, we're looking for $20 either direction. Cash over short, $20 either direction. So this is where our exception report information is set. You can come in here and tell it that I want to see, um, uh, let's see, how about, um, voids, dollar amount of voids. And give it anything from $100 that way to $100 the other way. And if we had data, we would now, went back to the exception reporting screen, we would now see the number, uh, the dollar amount of the voids. This is also where you set up your summary report, any out of balance conditions, total refunds and overrings, number of no sales, will add number of voids as well, and so forth. And when we go to the summary report then, we can see 
it'll show us based on our day, seven day, rolling week, rolling four week, what our total number of voids were this Wednesday as opposed to last Wednesday. Maybe you'll start noticing a trend. Is there a particular day that we've got a whole bunch of number of voids and number of no sales? Could indicate a problem at the store. Within math, we've also got um, on that reports menu, we've got some uh, more traditional type reports, pooled margin report. So for this particular store on November the 1st, we can see how many gallons they sold, what the pump price was, which if they had a price change during the day, this would, not, this would be more of an average pump price. Our price without tax, our cost. These average cost, price without tax, gives us our, our unit profit per unit over here. With some calculations, we also have that for total gross profit. So we can see that we sold 2,439 gallons of diesel and it was 52% of our total fuel sales. The street proceeds was $9,653 and it was 56% of our total sales dollars. And 56% of our sales brought us 65% of our gross profit. And you can see where we might have a problem with premium, or maybe not. Premium just isn't selling fast enough to keep up with our, our cost. We've got some detailed inventory merchandise and lottery, which I've already shown you. Invoice item detail. This is a, a different report. So we can see, um, if need be, this is just another report that shows us what we bought from Idaho Beverages, what we had as credit, and whether or not there was a difference between what we brought in and what the vendor's invoice said. This would be used with scanning. We also have item count reports, scanning markup and markdowns and the product movement. I'm going to show you the product movement one within the system. This is available if you are scanning. So you can see what the item was, whether it was on promotion, what your gross profit percent was, what your gross profit dollar was, what your total sales were, unit sold, based on the criteria up here. What's showing in our screen here is all vendors all districts, but for a specific store, and it's only for a specific day. We can do the same thing for item level receiving. We can see what was brought, what was bought, and how many we received, our extended cost, and the retail. So when the Pepsi vendor talks you into buying that nasty Pepsi vanilla, talks you into buying 10 cases of it, you can come in here and see that you bought 10 cases, and then you can go back over here in your item level sales and see where maybe you sold a half a case. 
if you want to do any kind of item level inventory, that's a whole other discussion on what you want to do with item level inventory. Some people want to do the whole store. Other people are more concerned with their cigarettes and maybe beer inventories and tracking them on, as an item level. You can see what the book quantity of the item was, when it was last counted, the counted quantity, the quantity received since the count, sold since the count, et cetera, et cetera. And when you do your physical count, you can come in here and if we had a count, which I don't think we do, you can see what our count results were. It'll show us the item, when it was scanned, the total in inventory and our total uh, our unit cost retail, our total cost, and what the adjustment amount is. Whether you are keeping inventory at item level or not, you will always have item level sales and item level receiving. In addition, there was one other section here that I forgot to show you, consolidated reports. This is where you can get some of those reports that are a little bit different than for different areas. It by default opens up to the store link department sale. So let me do this. You can filter by district, by store, by a single date or a range of dates. You can tell it that you want to see just a department and it would list all the stores for that department so you can compare your stores. Or you can look at all departments. You've got your total department sales for whatever date range, cost to sales, your gross profit dollars, and your gross profit percentage. You can also get bad merchandise reports so that you can see what's being written off. You can see department inventory report, which shows us for the date range that you have put in up there what the beginning inventory was, ending inventory, net department sales, purchases, price changes, transfers in and out, spoilage, store use, and your inventory adjustments for physical. You can sort it by store name, store number, sort it by department. So that if we sorted it by department and we had more than one store, we would see that automotive department for store 40, 50, and 60 would be here. We can look at the, well, the department fuel sales we looked at. Fuel EPA reports. If you're familiar at all with our site tank um, report within mass, this is the same kind of report. We can see what our opening inventory was gallons sold, gallons delivered. It calculates the on hand, compares it to our stick reading, and shows our over short for that day. That day's stick reading becomes the next day's opening inventory. And it goes on down through the month. And based on your understanding of the EPA rules, it can be set, the percentage can be set, total gallons times 10%, plus 130 means that we can be, our over short should be within, um, should be around 1,361 gallons. Since we're only 14 and a half gallons short for the month, we are well within range. Fuel sales reports, current price, gallons sold, dollars sold, month to date gallons, month to date dollars. Our purchase invoices, it gives us another view of the invoices, cost and retail for the total, gross margin for the total of the invoice. And transfer invoices shows us information about the transfers that we've done. Now, 
if that doesn't do what you need it to do, remember that store links data is stored within SQL. So if we don't have it, what, what you want is not in the stock store link and mass reports. The, data's can, the data can be pulled from SQL into Excel. Here's our couple of examples. Um, we, we did a, a, a pivot table, which is giving um, management a recap. They can see from this one pivot table, <coughs> we can filter by store, filter by period, gallons sold, <coughs> excuse me, gallons sold, total grocery sales, total cigarette sales, beer sales, deli sales, lottery, lotto, money order, and cash over short. This same client wanted to also have their register department. So we created a pivot table. This is only the first, the top one is only the first four or five um, departments, and the bottom one is the last of the departments giving a grand total. What they use this for then was to help them with their sales tax reporting. And that is the end of what I have to say. So I will hand it back to Tom so that he can tell you about our next webinar and to see if we have any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. Very nice job. I want to take this opportunity to invite everybody to next month's uh, webcast. It's on March 14th. It'll start at 11.30 Pacific, 1.30 Central Time. And we're going to be talking about our upcoming 4.50 release. Uh, we've got uh, several new features that I think you'll be interested in, just to name a few. We've got a new uh, price quote and dispatch support feature that will allow you to handle multiple racks much smoother than uh, you can currently do that. We've got a new pricing group feature. We've made several improvements to bill of lading, to card lock, to uh, tax link, as well as the SQL data warehouse reporting feature that Lisa just talked about. So I want to make sure uh, everybody marks their calendar for that. Shortly after today's webinar, I'll be sending out an invitation so you can register for that. And now I'd like to open it up to uh, any questions you might have. As I said earlier in the introduction there, if you have any questions, please enter them into the question chat window you see towards the lower right of your screen. So we'll give everybody a, a couple of minutes to come up with some questions. And I know uh, that was a lot of information, and you're probably going to think of things after the, the webinar ends. If, if you do think of anything after we uh, conclude today's webinar, feel free to email us at sales at dm2.com. And actually, Lisa, if you want to move down one more slide, we've got the, uh, the we've got, oh, I'm sorry, I thought we had that email address on there. I'll have to add that for the future there. But um, it doesn't look like we've got any questions at the moment. Uh, we'll give it another minute. Uh, and then if not, we'll go ahead and close things up. So while we're waiting for questions, I'll just remind everyone that today's webinar has been recorded. Once the recording is available, uh, we'll post that on to, along with a copy of Lisa's presentation slides onto the customer content page of our website. And then I'll send an email around to let everybody know when that's available. We should have all that up on the site by sometime tomorrow. So you can expect a follow-up message from me on that. All right, it doesn't look like we're uh, getting any questions, so we'll go ahead and conclude today's webinar. I'd like to thank Lisa for doing an outstanding job of covering all the uh, features of, a, of StoreLink kind of on a high level there, giving you a taste of all the different reporting options that are available there. And I want to thank everyone for attending today's StoreLink webinar. Thank you very much. <laughs>